Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. Well, you guys already know that I love spectrum analyzers, and I'm always on the lookout for anything new that might be good. So when I saw this one popping up frequently on AliExpress last year, I picked up a few to check out. It's beautiful, I think. Bright, vibrant LEDs, tidy packaging, shallow depth for easy mounting, and it has one extra feature that we'll get to that really made life easy for me. More on that in a bit. This is just about the perfect size, in my opinion. There are lots of tiny spectrum analyzers out there, and even some pretty big ones for sale, but this one looks like it would be just the right size for a piece of home audio equipment. I'm hoping to build an amplifier later this year, and this spectrum analyzer is in the running to be included in that design. So let's check out the hookup. On the back, we have a 3.5mm audio input, a USB-C socket for power, this runs on 5 volts, a small potentiometer for adjusting the fill of the lights per a given input signal, and this here is that extra feature that I alluded to earlier, a built-in microphone. So you don't have to hook this up directly to an audio signal if you don't want to. So why would you want to use a microphone for an input signal? Well, I've used this in three different music players that I designed for three preschool classrooms, and the built-in microphone made life easy for that particular use. I just had to give it power. I could also see this feature being useful if you were to put this into a boombox or a mid-sized Bluetooth radio. For home audio use, I definitely use the direct signal input though. It does pick up some ambient noise. Also, there are some nice touches on this board. For instance, notice where the plugs are. The audio input and the power input sockets are positioned such that you can plug them in and the cables won't be sticking out past the side of the unit. They put some thought into the design of this one, and I appreciate that. Also, if you want to hardwire this in and not use the USB plug, there are two solder tabs clearly marked to make hookup pretty easy. And check out the frame of this thing. It's a little different. It's one big potted plastic piece. Usually these things are made of rows of individual potted LED packages, which are then soldered to a common board. But this one's all self-contained and it makes for a really nice looking display. You won't need to hide this behind a piece of plexiglass to hide the lines between the individual LED packages because there are none. It's all one piece, and I think it looks pretty good as is. You can purchase it with different color LEDs, and like all of these things on AliExpress, there are several different sellers. And if you look real close at the circuit boards from one seller to the other, you'll probably notice minor differences. In fact, the unit that I have has these two little buttons to adjust the display options and the one that they're currently selling now doesn't have those buttons. So I have to post the standard disclaimer that this review is really only valid for this particular unit. Although I suspect they probably all work basically the same, minus some display option features possibly. There do appear to be solder pads on the newer ones they're selling, so it's possible that you could add your own buttons to get similar functionality, but I can't say for sure. And as usual, the documentation with these things is pretty awful. You pretty much just have to experiment. But just to show you the options that this one has, the top button changes the brightness of the display. The other button allows you to select different visual options. I've always liked the descending chaser lights for some reason. If you purchased one of the newer ones and figured out how to add buttons to change the display options, please leave a comment below on how that went. I'd love to hear about it. It's a 15-band analyzer with 13 LEDs in each band. It also has the numeric frequency centers listed at the bottom in that classic green color. The units I purchased were white LEDs. And I picked that one because it looked like it would match up with pretty much any color scheme. Now, it's a raw piece. There's no direct mounting method included, so you'll need to figure out a way to mount this in whatever device you plan to install it into. The first cabinet I made using one of these, I just cut out the opening with a jigsaw, slightly undersized, and very carefully sanded and filed the opening to the same size as the display itself, hoping for a snug fit. I just kind of had to creep up on the exact size. Well, that's okay if you can be careful and don't mind spending 20 minutes or so fussing with this, but since I was graciously gifted a 3D printer by a friend some months ago, I ended up designing my first ever 3D printed part for this display. And that bezel ended up working really nice for mounting. 
I'll leave a link to my free design on Thingiverse so you can download and print out one of these bezels for yourself if you wish. So let's talk price. Amazingly, it's currently running around only $15. That's super cheap in my mind. I've spent well over $100 on DIY versions of these things in the past, such as this one that I had to solder together myself. And notice that the lights on that one are not as closely spaced together as they are on the one we're reviewing. For only $15, I don't know how they make money on this. Also, I should mention that they do sell a double version for stereo display, if that's your thing. So, you're really getting a lot for your money here. But, there is an issue with this analyzer. And it's kind of a big one. See, it's not really a spectrum analyzer. At least not in the purest sense. Well, let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to play a slow sine sweep from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Did you see how it responded as the frequencies rose? Or watch, I'll do it again. If it's still kind of hard to see, I'll show you what the response looks like on the new vacuum fluorescent analyzer I just purchased, and you should be able to tell what's going on. See how the lights rise from left to right in a kind of wave? Well, that's what's supposed to happen because the frequencies are rising from low frequency to high frequency. Now let me run the same sweep against the Windows bars and graphs display, which has good accuracy. Now one more sweep with the LED analyzer we're reviewing. Yeah, this one's kind of all over the place. Well, now that you know what to look for, let's play some music on both the new LED and VFW displays at the same time. It's harder to see the difference with music, but yeah, something's off with the LED unit. So, is that a deal breaker? I can't answer that for you because it depends on what you want to use this for. If you plan to use this as some kind of diagnostic tool, I think I'd pass. It's just not accurate enough. But if you just want something dynamic and visually appealing to look at while you're enjoying your tunes, I think it's fine for that, at least for me. Now I mentioned possibly using this display in an amp build that I'm planning for the future. I have another spectrum analyzer that I'm considering using for that as well. It's a VFD, or Vacuum Fluorescent Display Spectrum Analyzer. They used that technology a lot in audio and video equipment back in the 1980s and 90s. And that one has a nice vintage look to it. I have to play around with both of these a little bit more before I decide though. Funny enough, this one sort of tries to mimic a VFD display. If you look close at the individual LEDs, you can see that they are somewhat blocked by a grid on the front panel in such a way that only tiny segments are clear and allow light to pass through. So they're going for that classic VFD look. And I think it kind of works. So I'd love to hear from you on what you think about the Spectrum Analyzer. How about the accuracy issue? Could you still see yourself using this in your project? A boombox or radio or something? Or do you think that its lack of total accuracy is just too much of an issue? Let me know in the comments. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Looks like it's about at the maximum about 290 milliamps, something like that. And at rest, it looks like about 60 or 70 milliamps. So the LED lights, they do draw a little bit of amperage. I mean, there are a lot of them. That sort of makes sense.